it's a bright morning in mumbai when we talk about mumbai it gives a lot of energy inspiration and uh, tagmas dayan mold exhibition 13th dayan mold exhibition is happening here and from here we are coming out with a very special podcast called shape shifters the untold stories of manufacturing see we see this automotive companies if we say that maruti tata uh, mahindra or any multinational companies even hyundai which is manufacturing here we see that new new models earlier there was one model which used to run for years but in a year now many automotive companies with different different beautiful cars and the look is what is making the difference and there are so many tool makers who works behind that to give that look and shape of those plastic products because plastic is one of the main component in an automotive today so we are coming out with those people you know their their life uh, how their contribution is making a difference in the manufacturing sector and we are having the first guest with us in this podcast terence mirinda who is working with the tool makers for decades thanks uh, for coming and joining this podcast thanks sir thanks for inviting me Uh, sir as i told you many people don't know the contributions what these tool makers making in the because we don't see the people the consumers don't see the uh, people inside they only see the end product but as a person working with these people for last couple of decades you have seen the transformation of tool making in india right so if you can just give us a from your experience with these people what are the this change happened right now if you compare with last 10 15 years I think first, you know, one one key point. I think that the origin, I would say, you know, the starting point is to realize that the tool making industry, the tool and die industry, really is the bedrock. You know, it's the foundation on which the entire uh, engineering industry is built. And uh, you know, the tool makers play a very very important role in the industrialization of the entire country in self reliance. So when we are talking about Atmanirbhar Bharat, I mean, the the tool and die community in India, right? They epitomize that because. without the tool and die making community you're not going to be able like you rightly said to produce all the things that we see in everyday life right so everything around us right now you know in some or the other way the origin you know somewhere is the tool and die industry right so from the mold or the die or the press tool or you know the pressure die casting die etc etc you know the precision mold injection mold you are going to get the final end product and this is where the tool and die industry you know really is the the mother i mean really that is grooming everything else Uh, as far as india is concerned and the tool and die industry in india is concerned you know i think the it has done extremely well so uh, several years ago so when i started my career you know in in the machine tool industry which would have been around 1998 uh, the tool and die industry was really at a very uh, uh, i would say still at that point at a nascent stage it was not able to compete right in terms of uh, speed to market in terms of accuracy uh, in terms of uh, consistency uh, when you compared with Uh, you know with similar products of molds and dies coming out of europe or the us you know other developed economies like even you know japan korea etc so today that is really changed and the indian tool and die industry really is able to stand on its own feet has access to the best technology and has a rich culture and tradition because you know everything comes out of experience and we have very experienced mold makers today in india and as philips machine tools you know we, we are really privileged to have uh, kind of watched this transformation from the ground up so you know we see very very good tool makers you know several names you know i i would not want to mention one but you know there are so many good tool makers in mumbai in hyderabad chennai uh, in the north of india so you know it's not so today what has happened is it's kind of spread across india and i believe truly believe the tool and die industry in india right now is in a position Uh, to compete with uh, any any tool and die industry worldwide including in the including in china which is one of the most competitive you know markets uh, worldwide and that will reduce you know over a period of time will further reduce import of molds tools into india which will be made in india on uh, you know machines such as ours i would say see uh, as you told that i also got the opportunity to talk couple of the mold tool makers earlier so there i found out that you know earlier it was completely people were doing in the traditional lathes and all those things now once the cnc came they were able to change yeah. they have adopted the technology but unfortunately with the capex also they were able to have they have invested on the capex but some of the people were not able to really use these technology to the fullest yeah like the awareness also is not that key 
happening eventually if you see pune is also a kind of a lot of, lot of yeah. mold tool yeah. makers are there but if you see the people who are very profitability otherwise high tech state of the art tool rooms are now also i believe there is a lot of room for improvement so as a you know industry expert working with these tool makers what is it that including tagma can do to create this awareness of adopting technology and use it using it properly you know i i do feel i do feel that the government has taken really good steps okay you know with a lot of schemes may may not be specifically directed towards the tool and die industry you know it's directed in general towards the manufacturing industry so i mean it would be great to see some schemes you know from the government which maybe you know tagma could lobby with the government for which would Uh, specifically incentivize the tool and die industry you know similar to the schemes they have right now for the ev industry and the drone industry and you know uh, other and and like chip making and you know electronics so i think there has to be tagma uh, plays a very important role as a nodal body and the voice of the tool makers you know i truly believe that yes i mean they could you know they could and they should you know work proactively uh, with the state and central governments to get uh, laws enacted right which would make financing even easier for the tool makers which would you know give them maybe you know additional tax benefits etc because because the tool you know tool making is so crucial uh, to our self reliance you know our even our defense preparedness right i mean we need uh, we need the tool makers in india really to be strong because it's not just in uh, con- you know consumer goods or i mean there are a lot of uh, defense related products right we need to have forging dies and you know everything else we see tool makers in india small tool makers excellent craftsmanship excellent craftsmanship trying to scale up so i believe you know it's like startup india right i mean why not have you know why not treat the tool makers like startups and you know give them the startup uh, so there are so many incentives for startup india you know so you know i'm i am not sure personally whether tool maker would classify under startup india because the startup india you know when you think of it you think of okay all it driven IT. companies and so on so why not have a startup india for tool makers because you know those kind of benefits would motivate young tool makers you know coming out of reputed organizations right they would be say okay let's start our own business you know let's become entrepreneurs and you know that is the spirit of msme that you know the indian government led by our honorable prime minister you know sri narendra modi, modi ji i mean he is he epitomizes that right his government epitomizes that they want you can see the focus on msme you can see the focus on manufacturing you know the current decade is india's decade it's not something that we are just saying you know i think it's we are living it and uh, the future generations you know will tell the story so uh, i mean i really feel yes the tagma has a important role to play and you know maybe it's not just tagma i think it's the entire ecosystem you know tagma and the ecosystem around it uh, including the large companies i mean if you see today tata or mahindra or great great institutions you know led by visionary people uh, they understand the importance of the tool and die making uh, industry right so they actually grew out of these industries so i think they could play a very important role together with tagma you know in supporting in supporting this initiative to grow tool making throughout the country yeah actually i completely agree with you the craftsmanship of these tool makers is yeah. excellent it's yeah. globe world class and you also told about china i was talking to one gentleman yesterday and he was telling that uh, an indian company as well as a chinese company got a particular order for a particular machine by the time the indian company was able to get the first Uh, part and yeah. the sample was sent the chinese guy by the time have given the uh, yes. order so the major problem they were facing was the different like an insert polishness of the inserts it took time you know different different the down time which took but they were fast the automation yeah having multiple set of working in one place and making their life easier yesterday also when we were discussing the uh, guest of honors when they were people were coming from volvo as well as from the uh, you know data electronics that two points one point was that how they can give these molds on time yeah so how do you think that automation in machining in different parts can help these people to give a good competition with china or any other uh, manufacturer yeah, in I the think, world yeah i i think that i mean we we all know that machining the component in a single setup like using phi axis you know uh, machining and of course loading and loading automated in an automated manner will definitely improve productivity and you know the speed to market Uh, i think on the designing side as well right the uh, designers should have access to the late you know to the best uh, software and uh, you know the combination of the you know the software the cad cam you know uh, the technologies the machine machine like a really high tech machine with multi axis machining with auto loading 
uh, definitely can take the you know can take the tool and die industry to the next level i also feel another thing which is really important is you know adoption of 3d printing uh, because that is something that additive manufacturing right so the tool and die industry we know we know a few tool makers who are using additive manufacturing in their uh, you know for the conformal cooling of the inserts and so on we there are a few companies in india but that adoption is frankly very very low uh, the good part is the the you know the government of india has actually invested in a lot of 3d printers you know in reputed organizations like okay. indo german tool room and cttc and other institutions right and these fine institutions which have their own tradition of mold making so you know could actually kind of spur on with the rnd you know and work hand in hand with the private tool makers you know developing these kind of inserts for them uh, which you know when proven you know technically to be you know working to their satisfaction could then result in them adopting 3d printing so we have also seen this i mean yeah the time to market for a sometimes for a chinese tool builder is much faster and that is also because you know we also see the uh, you know the resources like a chinese tool builder will you know put in 10 five axis machines at one time you know the indian tool builder will put in one so that's the challenge is the difference and it is it is coming because of you know i would say cost of financing definitely i don't think that the indian tool makers are have appetite have less appetite for risk or have less knowledge or even lack funds in some places they have the funds but it is the cost of funds which is a which is problem so i think it's a cost of funding right and organizations like sidbi you know which are of course you know uh, working with the government government or through the government right to provide funding i think these norms uh, you know lobbying with the government to improve this bring down the cost of capital for our tool makers will have a big you know it have a big impact i think uh, you also have worked with haas and yeah. uh, meltio i believe you have uh, introduced the philips hybrid here yeah so that also i think uh, on that uh, yes. way there people can have both in one machine right yeah. the the subtracting and additive yes yes so definitely we see we are you know at philips uh, we pride ourselves on offering a complete tool room solution which includes you know all tool room technologies we try to do this in two ways i mean one of course in a very affordable format also i would put it on a very high end completely automated format so we have you know we we can work with the small tool makers we work with the very large tool makers as well uh, and i think uh, the hybrid technology that we've introduced at the show which is a philips additive hybrid you know combining additive and subtractive in the same machine uh, definitely it is a technology you know of the present and the future uh, i i believe still you know in, again in india uh, it will take time to adopt the technology you know we have to be realistic about it but uh we are ready from philips side right we are ready to invest we've got equipment on display we're ready to do trials for our customers and show them the benefits of this technology and this is yeah. developed by philips right yes, like yes, you yes. you have already have philips yeah, so are... it's, yeah it's it's basically it was you know the philips additive hybrid was uh, developed in the us it started out as a initiative for the us army navy okay. uh, it was done by our federal division uh, brian uh, christopones who's the general manager of philips uh, additive hybrid division which is a separate division in itself is uh, globally responsible for this product line and this product development and is doing a lot of r&d in the us right now in fact uh, i would you know i'm happy to share with you that we are actually investing in india in hiring a phd engineer who oh. will be working directly with brian in the us and so whatever the con you know ideas thoughts we'll actually be doing the r&d in india so you know it's again uh, kind of it's a good marriage you know between india and we are able uh, to the understand US. the technology yeah. and it can and help the yeah. indian uh, manufacturing in total yes, yes. whatever Ooh. information we are getting yeah. and not the last the least philips is one company what we have seen that you know very actively from years trying to build this skill yeah. that is what one of the biggest uh, challenge what uh, mr jim from uh, tata electronics who were telling that it is india so as you told we are living in that era where india is yeah. progressing but one of the biggest challenge is the skill and philip education now you have yeah. a completely separate vertical you put it you working with the uae working with malaysia and you work with a lot of indian yeah. uh, governments including bihar odisha and all those things yeah. so how we will be able to solve this skill problem in the tool because we have smart machines but until unless we get smart people yeah. how the uh, we can solve this yeah, so i think i think at philips education so we are working like an enabler you know the idea to really focus on education was Uh, really driven by our customer requirements you know so you talk to any customer today whether in the tool and die industry in automotive in any in industry today right the common grouse the common problem is they do not have a uh, skilled manpower 
uh, we need and and on the other side you know the the other side of the situation is that you have you have young adults wanting jobs wanting to work uh, who do not have the skill set so i think the in this sense you know philips education is partnering with different governments uh, state governments uh, the uttarakhand state government is a very very good example uh, we have a very high level engagement with the uttarakhand state government we have a center of excellence working there very successfully placing you know we place students we first train students i think more than the, the placement will be automatic if the training is excellent and that's what we are focusing on so we are trying to give students uh, training not on outdated equipment they should be trained on the latest uh, greatest equipment you know state of the art which is being used in the industry so we are training them on you know how to use probing uh, how to use five axis how to use uh, cobots for auto loading how to do 3d printing so a student when he uh, gets trained on these kind of technologies develops a very confident mindset uh, it is it is still a small part of the journey we are working with tata technologies in many locations throughout india uh, kind of like a force multiplier or enabler you know supporting their efforts of you know tata of course is a great company and you know totally committed to building the nation and you know we are trying to play our small part in supporting tata technologies in all the education projects and like you said you know in uh, we have also operated we are operating outside india and in a way you know that's also helping the skilling within india because all of those industries are actually being uh, in, you know we have indians working there so in qatar where we have a center of excellence you know we have indians a lot of indians working there in uh, throughout qatar you know basically running the machine shops and the tool rooms there so yeah i mean i believe that philips education is looking at this holistically we are not just looking at offline of training in the field we are looking at online training to our app uh, we are looking at creating a job portal where we can basically connect our customers with prospective students and we are doing this all within the ambit of the government of india and the government of the united states so we are trying to uh, you know uh, kind of marry uh, you know marry or bring everything together in one package which is uh, ultimately going to benefit the student you know it's it's the key thing is going to benefit our young people throughout india i think it will definitely benefit the yeah. country so we were talking every people are talking industry people are talking only one thing is skill is not there yeah. and uh, we cannot expect now the academy to come to us or the government to come to us right. they are taking i feel it is very important the industry should go but what philips have done is completely different because it is not just you are going to the industry but you took the responsibility to talk to government to talk to these institutes and give yeah. them the technology and doing that so i know that if we want to talk about this yeah. we can talk continuously yeah uh, we have time uh, constraints but we are sure that maybe in the next uh, one of our podcast we will get mr miranda yeah. and his thoughts his vision is something what really helped a lot of tool makers and other precision machining industry and we expect he him to more passionately yeah. work <laughs> for the just not the indian manufacturing but as you are Uh, helping the other countries also yeah thank you Thanks very much for your time yeah. and uh, have thank a great thank you thank you hari thank you machine maker and thank you for raising awareness for this important topic yeah thank you thank you